Hello, it's Dr. Meg Howe here. What I'd like to help you with today is to give you five actual steps that you can take as a breeder to get yourself back in the black and out of the red. Things are pretty grim right now for breeders. Um, you know, if you have a look at a little bit of uh, stats on what's happening with the market at the moment. Uh, this is just from Google Trends. This is the number of people who are searching on the search term puppies for sale worldwide, and it's the same in pretty much every Western country at the moment. It's a very similar pattern. This is over the last five years. This big, big bump here, of course, was the COVID puppy rush. But you can see what I'm trying to show you here is that before the COVID puppy rush, this is around about the level of interest in buying a puppy online, and this is where it is now. So it's down to about half what it was pre-COVID, and I think we saw a lot of people entering as breeders into the market too during the puppy rush, thinking this is easy money. Little did they know what it takes to be a good breeder, hey? So there's been an oversupply of puppies and the demand is way down. Is that likely to, to change anytime soon? I don't think so because we've got uh, inflation. doesn't look like it's going to abate anytime soon. Interest rates are going up. Hopefully they all stop going up. But people are tightening their belts um, across the world, across the Western world, in Australia, in the UK, in the USA, in Canada, everywhere. Um, and, you know, they are basically uh, saying to themselves, well, we can't really afford to get a dog right now. It's much, much harder to sell puppies right now. But at the same time, there's still people buying at the top end of the market they're not as affected by the economic conditions so while the bottom of the market and the middle of the market are absolutely crowded with people trying to sell pups at the top of the market there are still opportunities for breeders so what i want to share with you today is how to grab those opportunities and get yourself up to the top of the market so let's get into it so the very first thing that you need to do is have a website that works there's no point just having a website up there as a business card, a glorified business card. Why? Because the way that top buyers find your website and therefore find you is because they're actively doing research into the breeds that they're interested in buying and you want them to be able to find you by looking at information on your website that you have written about your breeds. And this is what I see Many breeders do wrong. They just have pretty pictures of their puppies, pretty pictures of their dogs, and they don't actually talk about their breed. So there's no way that people can actually find them by searching for information. So the thing is about top-end buyers, they do their research. So if you want to get the top people who are both willing to pay for the right puppy from the right breeder and wait for the right puppy, then you really do have to have your website working correctly. Now, what that actually involves is first you've got to have the website set up in a way that Google likes it. Now, Google is all about giving visitors to websites a good experience. And what we mean by that is, for a start, it should look good on all sorts of devices, mobile phones, iPads, that sort of thing. It should also be fast loading because if it takes more than a couple of seconds to load, people will just bounce straight out of it. So they won't have any patience. It's got to be a safe place for them to go. Um, it's got to respect privacy of the people who visit there. It's got to be a relevant um, content that matches the search query, how people found it. These are all important things from Google's point of view. Also, they're looking for websites where you know, other people are talking about the website on their websites, for example, and that gives authority to the website. So all of these things Google takes into account. Um, and then, of course, talk about your breed. Um, this is important. Don't just have pretty pictures. Google is not a pretty pictures engine. It's an information engine. So provide information, ideally, that matches the sort of information that your top customers are looking for about your breed. A trap I see many breeders fall into is thinking that paying thousands of dollars to a developer to create their website is going to fix everything for them, and unfortunately, it doesn't. 
it'll just end up with a pretty website and that sits there and there's crickets. So you can create a pretty website quite cheaply on Wix or Weebly or GoDaddy Website Builder and it's really not going to do any worse than when you've paid a developer a couple of grand maybe to create for you. And the reason why is because developers are good at making websites look nice but they're not good at making the websites rank on Google because they're two different skill sets. Unfortunately, you can't really outsource the part that's really going to make the biggest difference, which is talking about your breed, because only you can talk about your breed. So you really do have a learning curve to figure out how to set that information up so that Google um, actually likes what you said, can see what you're talking about, and make sure what you're talking about is what your customers want to hear and are interested in getting information about. Um, Now, the second part of the steps you need to take so the first step is get a website that works and it will take a while for that to work for you too it's not an overnight success story the second thing you need is social proof now people need social proof before they buy even if you have a website that is absolutely fabulous everything's perfect you could be a scammer who's very good at making websites. So for a start, you've got to have social proof in the form of maybe videos um, on YouTube or on uh, social media like Facebook or Instagram, for example, um, which show behind the scenes that you are a real breeder, that you have live videos of puppies, for example, live posts um, that will show that you're real. Um, Also, They want to make sure they're not going to get scammed by someone who's a puppy mill. So you need to show behind the scenes of how your dogs live, the fact that they're kept, you know, as part of the family, that they're not all locked away in big pens um, like a puppy mill operation. People want to deal with boutique breeders who are at the top of the market. They really do care where their pups come from and they want to make sure the pups are coming from a good place where they're looked after parents. So that's the second function of your social media. First one is you're not scamming. Second one is you're not a puppy mill. Third one is you have happy customers. Your puppies grow up to be fabulous pets. So encourage your customers to share and give you feedback, let you know how their dog's going. And when they do, then ask them if it's okay to share that up on your social media. So that way someone who comes to your social media, for example, Facebook, can see you're not a scammer, can see that you're not a puppy mill and can see that you've got happy customers and lovely dogs and uh, that make fabulous canine companions. So that is the importance of social media. Do be aware that your social channel, say Facebook or YouTube or whatever it is, is not the best way to get customers. Um, we what we do at best is interrupt people's scrolling through their feed and so they're probably not even thinking about getting a puppy until they come across your post and they'll look at it and go oh how cute is that little puppy it's gorgeous I wonder how much it is so you know the only uh, inquiry you're likely to get from people like that is how much is it And, you know, often they won't even bother coming back to you after you tell them because they weren't really seriously looking for a puppy when they came across your your pictures and videos. Whereas someone who finds you from your website, they're actively looking for a puppy. So when they come across your website, then they're going to be interested in, in finding out more and they'll be genuine. So that's another reason why your website's important. You know, we've got someone in our in our group because I have um, students, uh, breeder students in my program, um, in a paid program, and one of the ladies who joined our program has got one and a half million followers on Instagram and yet she still can't connect with the right people to buy puppies from her. So if that doesn't say anything, then I don't know what does. So the third biggest thing you can take away from this and action you need to take is to have effective customer communication. And this is something that most breeders mess up. Um, 
the first time someone contacts you could be the very last time that you ever hear from them. So make it count. Uh, don't just flick people straight to a form to fill out. Just put yourself in their position. Imagine that you're looking for a fabulous breeder um, who produces top quality puppies and you might approach 20 different breeders and then you are sent to 19 application forms to fill out and then one breeder actually bothers first to get back to you and explain the benefits of getting a puppy from them. So you, what I suggest you do is have a template um, of what you say rather than talking on the phone. Uh, this is a big mistake too that I believe is made by most breeders is they want to talk on the phone. And if you're talking on the phone, the problem with that is that you might forget to say something really important or the person who's inquiring might forget something really important that you said or um, they they won't be able to actually share what you said very well with the family members and you don't have a record of what was said either because it was all on the phone. So if someone calls me interested in a puppy, I very quickly, within five minutes, I will try to get the email address off them and say, look, I've got a whole heap of information that will answer most of your questions. If you would like me to send that to you now, um, give me your email address and then if you have any more questions, you can get back to me. So that's how I handle it and it works very well. So in your communication, you should be outlining the things you do with your puppies to turn them into superior pets and actually explain the benefits of each of those things because buyers don't know what ENS is, buyers don't know what puppy culture is. So if you do those things, for example, then say, look, you know, I do ENS because I want um, all of my puppies to have a good chance to grow up to be resilient dogs who um, are lucky to have good behaviour in all sorts of circumstances and not be prone to behavioural issues or separation anxiety. You know, um, I get my potty training started on all my puppies because I want to make sure that it's as easy as possible for my buyers to, to potty train their pups into their home environment. So, you know, everything you do, try to phrase it in a way of what's in it for the buyer. So the, set, the fourth thing, that I see most breeders mess up is that they don't keep a paid waiting list. I know a lot of breeders are like, oh, you should never take a deposit until puppies are born and all that stuff. Um, but that means that you'll be breeding without having a strong waiting list to breed to. In And in today's economy, like who wants to take the risk that you won't have buyers ready for when those puppies are ready to go home? thing is people won't take it seriously being on your waiting list unless they actually give you some money they'll even forget totally that they're even on your waiting list so that's a good reason to take a big deposit we recommend five hundred dollars uh, commitment thing is though if you don't have a puppy for them in the time frame you've stated in your correspondence to them then they're entitled or they should be entitled to all of their deposit back. So just don't go off spending at all. Um, keep some aside. And if you don't have a puppy for them, you can always give them their deposit back after giving them a reasonable wait time that they can expect to wait. Um, that removes the barrier to them joining your list. If it's all refundable, then there's no barrier. Um, some breeders will take uh, deposits and then say you'll never see a dollar of that again no matter what happens the sky might fall but you'll never see it again so you know that isn't fair and that puts people off even if it's only $200 you know if, if breeders saying well you know if I don't have a puppy for you we'll put that over as a credit on another puppy and your situation might change you know you might marriage might break up or you might get sent to another country to live or whatever the thing is that happens that means you can't have a dog anymore we don't care you'll always have this $200 credit here though I mean that's really not fair so probably not, not even legal so you know be fair be you know legal and compliant to your local rules and have a refundable deposit just in case 
Now, I find that most people, um, if there's only a delay of a couple of months, will stay on your list because they don't want to start all over again looking for another breeder. If they found you, they're happy to stick with you. What's a couple of months compared to the next 12 or 15 years of owning the dog, right? Which brings me down to the fifth thing that is absolutely imperative if you want to operate in the black in today's economy, and that is be the best. Strive to be the best. Now, what does the best mean? The best means making sure that you are breeding what the top end buyers are looking for. People at the top end of the market are looking for a puppy that is likely to live a long and healthy life and it will be fun to own, to have behaviour they're going to enjoy living with. Those are the two things. Um, For example, if I share my screen here and show you some listings. So we have two different listings here. Um, this is from the USA where you guys are. Puppies.com, people can buy a chocolate Labrador puppy for $400 right now. But at the same time, we've got people uh, buying from Puppy Spot in the USA, virtually the same puppy, a chocolate Labrador puppy, for $28.49. So you got $400 compared to for seven times as much money, um, this puppy here, and why are they willing to pay that extra money? And the answer it lies in this 10-year health guarantee that is offered by Puppy Spot Puppies. Now, I'm not telling you to become a Puppy Spot breeder. I mean, I'm not saying not to either, but Puppy Spot takes more than half the money because they cover the 10-year health guarantee. What the takeaway is from this example is that a a strong health guarantee will get get you a better price. And um, we haven't even started talking on this example about all the other things you can be doing to add value to your pups. A strong health guarantee is definitely one of them. But, for example, on this page doesn't say anything about potty training being started, maybe personality matching the puppies, maybe, um, you know, ENS, puppy culture, um, all those things, crate conditioning, chew toy conditioning, all those things that you could be doing with your pups. It's not even mentioned. So imagine if the person who's willing to pay this for this little puppy could find you on your website and they see the social proof that you're a great breeder and you're real, you're not a scammer, you've got happy customers, you effectively communicate the benefits and you're adding real benefits on the social side as well, like getting the potty training and stuff started. Do you think that they're more likely to, to go with you than this per, this um, website here? I think they are. So, you know, we have a lot of influence over our puppies we've got them for their whole early childhood you know first eight to nine weeks of a puppy's life is its early childhood what we do and we don't do makes a massive difference to how puppies show up and that's no news to most of you guys but you know we can make with very small interventions we can we can help our puppies turn out to be the best they can be we can avoid inbreeding Um, We can do all our health testing. We can offer a health guarantee that's very strong and fair on us and fair on the buyer and make our puppies irresistible, worth paying for, worth waiting for. Now, so those are the five things. Have a website that works. Make sure you have some social proof through some sort of social channel or two. Make sure that you communicate the value effectively with your communication. Don't don't waste communication and inquiries from your buyers. Have a paid waiting list so that you can breed with confidence and make your puppies worth it. Make breed for the buyer. You know, do manage your puppies for the buyer. Now, if you'd like to know more about how to optimize your success as a breeder i have a free one hour online masterclass that you can watch it's at elitebreederformula.com forward slash free breeder masterclass watch the masterclass you'll get a lot more information than what i was able to share here and um, i look forward to talking with some of you personally about your breeding business afterwards if you would like to so thanks for listening and i'll catch you next time bye for now
Hi, it's Dr. Meg Howe here, and I'm very pleased that you've invited me to speak at the Big Hearted Breeders Summit. I know things are very grim right now with the market, and I'm here to help you get out of the red and back into the black by giving you five steps that you can take to get you there. I specialize in helping breeders reach the top end of the market, and I'm very pleased to tell you now exactly how to do that.